Okay, so a while ago we had a version of Pi Mega released for the Raspberry Pi 5 by Chris Edwards Restoration and it is excellent, but we really want it to work on a Raspberry Pi 500. So let's download it and see if it works. Being that the Amiga was one of the greatest computers built into a keyboard of all time, it seems like a nice match to put it on a Raspberry Pi 500. So let's have a look. So the download is this one for the Raspberry Pi 4, 405. And let's download that. And this is a torrent file. Luckily I've got a torrent client on here. So let's just open that up and say OK. And that will start downloading. This is my version of KDE Plasma, which is based on Raspberry Pi OS, but I've just put a load of things in it and I've changed the, the look of it by adding KDE Plasma. And you get nice things like Windows snapping as well. But this is available to download. And also people keep asking me about the wallpapers. So in this OS, I've put all the wallpapers in the photos folder, I think. Yeah, pictures folder. So there's this one, which a lot of people ask at, which is not one of my AI ones, but it's a really cool image. And you can see in here a load of my creations which are created with Copilot. So let's see how that's getting on. So it looks like it's going to be a while. Okay, it looks like it's done. Let's open the folder that it's in. So my downloads folder and PyMega ARM. So let's extract that. So let's extract. And OK. And come back when that's all done and it hasn't finished yet but i've just noticed something if you move the mouse pointer right up to the top left corner it shows you all apps which is quite cool and then you can select an app and go straight to it or you can go up to the top corner and just press escape to go back very nice okay so that seems to have all done let's pop an sd card in and i'm going to write that with imager so choose os Use custom. And we've got a Pi Mega folder in here now. And there's an image. Choose storage. That's my SD card. And hit next. No and yes. Okay, so that's all done. I'm going to close that down. Take out the SD card and put the SD card back in again. And you can see here we've got root and boot. So what we need is the boot partition. So let's open that up. And what you're adding to this partition, now I've already done this because we've been playing around with this for a while, is these three files. Init RAM FS2712, BCM2712 with 500 on the end for the Raspberry Pi 500, and kernel 2712. Now where you find those is in a new copy of Raspberry Pi OS. So if you write Raspberry Pi OS to an SD card and pop that in your Pi. I've just popped another one in with a USB adapter. So it will be this partition. So this is a copy of Raspberry Pi OS and this is Pi Mega. And so you're looking for those three files. So Intram FS. So you can see it's here, BCM2712, and you can see that's here, and kernel2712, which is down here. So I've copied them to the desktop, and then if you copy all of them and then just drag them in, now I've done it already, so what it says is overwrite if, if there's a file with the same name on it. And the other thing you need to do is put the Amiga ROMs in this folder, so kick.rom. And if you go to Chris Edwards Restoration, I'll put a link in the description, he's got the full video on how to do this and where to get them. And it's also worth watching his video, he's the creator of this, so if you need any more information, I just play games on it, but he also does all sorts of Amiga things with it. So let's shut this down, and I'll boot up from the Pi Amiga SD card in the Pi 500. Okay, so let's pop the SD card in. I'm using the new Raspberry Pi 15.6 inch display. And I've got my Xbox 360 controller. And it's starting to boot. 
so we saw Linux for a second and now we've got one of the splash screens. The splash screens change all the time and here we have the workbench screen. So I have to go straight into the gaming side of it. So I game and I've got to do a search for sensible soccer. And there's loads of them. Let's go for Sensible World of Soccer, 97, 98. And I haven't done anything, haven't configured anything, and you can see it's booting straight into it. And the music is great in this. I've actually switched to using a Raspberry Pi 4 because I can do the audio separately, but I was also getting problems trying to get the audio out of the Pi 500. I'm not entirely sure why. Oh, I just need to hit F12 to enable my controller. So port one, Xbox 360. Uh, so this isn't a normal Xbox 360 controller. It's like a, a fake one that comes with a separate wireless dongle, 2.4 gigahertz dongle. And then you need to select gamepad. And if we do resume, I should be able to switch into the game. Yeah. So let's just do a friendly. Let's just pick some random teams. This is such a fast game. It's a brilliant game for multiplayer. Uh, and also you can do whole tournaments and things with it as well. <laughs> it's so hard. I used to be quite good at this, but I really am not now. Throw in. So yeah, you can see that it's it's all working as it should. Oh, I'm getting so much wrong. Come on, they're all over me. One, nearly. Yeah, brilliant. So if I want to quit out of that, oh, and I've just let a goal in, press F10 and that quits you out of the game. And let's search for another game. So Skidmarked is a great game. Uh, and back in the day, I never had a CD32, but the version's on here, so we can start that. I'm getting a bit of crackling. I don't know if you're picking it up on the speaker. Let's just do Start Match Race, Read CD. So here's various different tracks. Let's pick five. And let's see how well we get on. Oh, not a good start. Oh, I am still in second place though. Oh, <laughs> third, fourth. And this, just really playable. It gives you the right draw distance on the screen to be able to anticipate, but also the, the movement of the cars and the way they slide around, just really, really good for the time. And still really nice now. I still enjoy playing this over quite a lot of other car games, especially in multiplayer. We used to have a four-way control for the Amiga and I used to take my Amiga to a mate's house and at the time he had a 42-inch TV which was really big for a tube TV. He bought it off me uh, as a second-hand thing where I used to work and uh, yeah, it was, it was great. We mostly played Mega Drive but when I got my Amiga, certainly things like Sensi Soccer and this were definitely more popular because they were just just so much better. The graphics were so much better. Obviously not quite as good as the CD32 as I had a, an Amiga 600 HD. But yeah, brilliant. Right, so F10 to quit out of that. Obviously I would have won. And the amount of games on here is huge. So 4,199 games. Some of the games are duplicated. There's still loads on there. And I've got other videos showing this uh, on the Raspberry Pi 4 and all the various different versions. So have a look at that if you want to see some of the other Amiga games and a bit more about the system. If I close down this, but that's definitely my favourite bit about Pi Amiga. As I say, there's loads more in there. Another one I'll touch on is just music. We've got Winamp here and there are some tracks already in there. So it will start playing. And we can flick through a few of the tracks because I can't really play anything on here and it's all working and is nice and responsive. So let's quit out of that. 
And don't forget to have a look at the readme file because there's loads of information in there. Let me know if you get the audio working because I couldn't on the Pi 500. I didn't spend ages because I'd spent, I've spent a load of time on this and I've got a few products that I need to review. And you don't need a Pi 500 power wise for Pi Mega. The 400 is fine. The Pi 4 is fine as well. But uh, it's just nice to be able to get it working on more systems. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.